Hey guys, what's up? Answering a question from a subscriber. He says, uh, Hey Megan, sorry if you feel that I've been spamming you for the past couple of days. No, you haven't. I'm just really curious about what type of books you read because you're an intelligent person and inspiration. Thanks. Thanks for the compliment. Uh, like I said, I'm not intelligent. I'm just very curious. But, okay, types of books that I read. I, I, I read a lot of books. But before I even go and give you a list of the type of books that I read, I can't give you just the name of the, names of the book because it's too many. But uh, the, the most important is the type of books that I read, the category of books. And another thing is... I know it's very hard to read because I hate reading myself, but I hate reading. But um, one crucial thing is when you're reading, you have to be objective. You have to know what you're looking for, and you have to look at the table of contents, right, which gives you the list of the topics in the book, the chapters, and start off with the things that you that inspire you the most. Read only what inspires you the most. It's going to give you that momentum to make you keep reading the book. Don't just start off from the beginning and go along, which is the way most people do it. Read the chapters that inspire you. And then go on to the chapters that you know, like uh, that you that you're more curious about things like that. You want to divide and conquer when you read books. You know, if you try to read from beginning to end, man, it's not gonna happen. Like I mean, most of us are not cut out to read like that. We have so many distractions. Focus on what inspires you. You know, zoom. I mean, scan, scout. I'm gonna make a separate video showing you guys my my techniques for you know reading and finishing books really fast. But I happen to read the entire fucking book, even though some books I have to read entire books. But um. Because I'm so curious, uh, I I had to find a way to narrow down, you know, my my list of books. Because otherwise, I'd be reading the whole world. You know, I'm a I'm a I'm a learner. I love to learn. I love knowledge. I just love learning. So it keeps me going. So to limit that, I just started. I decided to read only the book, only the category of books that really matter, right? And I made a list. I wrote it down for you of the categories that I I believe any anyone who doesn't want to be a follower. You know, meaning anyone wants to be a leader or whatever, must read. Number one, history. You have to know history. I mean, I don't care what your obsession is, what your major is. You have to know history. So I read books on history. Like I said, biographies, you know, I made videos explaining how the greatest gift the dead left for us are the, is the biography. Because you could read the biography of an 80-year-old man and have about 80 years of experience in your little 20-year-old brain, you know. And you read four different books of different men who lived up to 40 and 60. You have all that experience. It took them years to acquire that. You get that in weeks or months. So history, biographies, you know, learn about empires. Learn about the, the fall and the rise of kingdoms and nations. Because you can really apply that to each human being. Every human being is a nation. We don't even know that. You are an empire. You're a nation. And um, it's important to know history because, like I said, history repeats itself, you know. The great quote says, those who don't know history are bound to repeat it. You know, so uh, history is the biggest weapon. No wonder all the kingdoms that became great empires and dominated the world, they were big on history. The Egyptians were big on history. The Romans were big on history. Great Britain were uh, big on history. Because you want to see the mistakes of the, of the people that came before you. Because, you know, things don't really change. Right? So you don't want to repeat the same mistakes. So history, number one. Number two, I would say you have to know something about philosophy. You have to study wisdom. I love wisdom because I love knowledge. So read philosophy because it gives you, it, it activates the, that part of your brain that, that's responsible for your ideas, you know. Uh, ideas are everything. Ideas are what makes the world go around. Ideas are why we have a laptop today and I have a webcam talking to me right now because of somebody's idea. And philosophy makes you think, makes you ask questions. You know, why, why, why? I always talk about how it's important to ask why, question everything. And philosophy, you know, it's a... Uh, it provokes you to ask questions. So read philosophy. Uh, believe it or not, I st I'm still behind. There's a lot of books that I haven't read on philosophy. Believe it or not, I haven't read the works of Aristotle, Plato, Socrates. I haven't read these guys yet. Contrary to what most people think, I'm just trying to find time. Uh, but read philosophy. Uh, war is my biggest obsession. War, military science. I love warfare because warfare isn't everything. I'm not referring to like the killing and the blood and all that shit. I'm referring to just the strategy, the tactics. Warfare is in everything. It's in business, economics, bodybuilding. Strategies you learn from war, you could apply that to every single area of your life because war is all around us, believe it or not. Um, so that's, that's, by the way, it's my biggest obsession is warfare. I love military science. Uh, you know, survival. You know, survival. It's true against the enemy. You are numbered. Use your brain to win. Use deception. All these things. Uh, also, you got to know politics. I read books on politics. You got to know politics, man. Uh, that's that ties in with history and everything like that. Once you, everything's about politics. You know, the world. You know, it's, it's politics. It's power. It's the handling of power. 
Um, you, you can't find a person on this earth that doesn't have politics. Even in the animal kingdom, there's politics. All right, so we, you know, you could combine those categories. For example, you could combine history and politics by reading the biography of a, of a famous... If you read the biography of, like, Napoleon, you're learning history, you're learning politics, you're learning war. You know what I'm saying? So try to combine this into books. Uh, and um, last but not least, uh, law, right? I try to read law, which ties in with philosophy. Try to read some books on law. Uh start off with the country you live in read the history of the law system in your country it's going to give you ideas about how things work you know it's not just about think about reading it's not just what you learn from what you read it's it's the, it, may, it gives you the ability to think outside the box right so you can read a book on on one thing like another thing i forgot to mention is math I mean, people hate math but math is great because you can study math and be able to solve problems that have nothing to do with math because of the critical thinking you get from that and i would say the most important out of all of these is religion. I got a lot of my knowledge, a lot of my understanding from reading the Bible. Now, I'm not Christian, I'm not Muslim, I'm not affiliated with any religious group, uh, you know, no hate against them. But the amount of knowledge you get from the Bible is amazing. In fact, I didn't stop going to church till I started reading the Bible. Because the more you read the Bible, the more you realize the nonsense that's going on, and the more you begin to think for yourself. So read it not for religious purposes, not because you want to know about God or whatever, which, I, which you know, you should, but that's your life. But read it because of the content of that book. It's amazing. You know, even at, even if you're an atheist, read the Bible because just, it has history. It has law. Most of our law system comes from the, you know, the, the, the works of Moses. It's politics. It's philosophy. It's war. It's, it's everything. Every category that I just gave you that every leader must know and be an expert at is in the Bible. So read it for the for the the treasure, the wealth that's inside of it, not for religious purposes, you know, unless, you know, you want that. But and that's the mistake most people make. They go, oh, I'm not Christian, I'm not gonna read the Bible. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with whether you're Christian or Jew or whatever. Read that book. The history in there is amazing. It would change your life. My life changed. People think well, people ask me all the time, Oh, you you, you know, you so I'm not intelligent. I read the Bible. I read the entire thing over and over and over again. So the first book I was to begin with is the Bible. Start with the Old Testament and then go with the New Testament, you know. And um, but uh, especially the old. And you'd be amazed at how quickly your understanding just swells. All right? That's the list of books that I read. Uh, a few suggestions. Um, read read uh, books of for example politics. You could read Machiavelli, you know, I didn't read that yet, but you could read that. You could read Robert Greene. He has a lot of great books on power and the handling of power, mastery, uh, 48 Laws of Power, 33 Strategies of War. Uh, you could read Sun Tzu. I love Sun Tzu, The Art of War. Right now I'm reading Masters of Command. I haven't finished that yet. It's been a while. Uh, you could read um, Law 101. You could read uh, your history books, whatever, right? So just find a, a starting place and uh, build momentum, all right? Hope that video helps. Over now.